This episode of the Kill Innovations Podcast is brought to you by listeners like you. You can become a supporter by visiting shop.filmmckinney.com and making a contribution. Your support helps defray the cost to produce, host, and stream the show. As always, any profits are donated to charities such as hackingautism.org. I'm Phil McKinney, and welcome to Season 11 of the Kill Innovations Podcast, a show about ideas, creativity, and innovation. Do you consider yourself a brave person? A person of courage and conviction, even in the face of challenges? Most of us don't. But as an innovator, you practice bravery every day. Bravery means opening oneself up to criticism and overcoming the fear of failure in order to do something extraordinary, to create a better world than the one we're living in, or to go further than anyone has ever gone before. Franklin Delano Roosevelt's most famous conviction, quote, The only thing we have to fear is fear itself. Belayed a deep and personal anxiety about showing his own weakness to the nation. FDR contracted polio in 1921 and became paralyzed from the waist down. He was quite sensitive about being filmed or photographed struggling with his mobility, which is why he recently released rare footage of him walking during a 1937 Major League All-Star baseball game is so striking. While most of us know about his disability, what is less well known is that he basically taught himself how to walk by swiveling his hips with the aids of braces that he kept hidden under his pants. He vowed that he would walk to the end of his driveway which was about a quarter mile without aid, and although he never accomplished this feat, he never gave up either. And in 1937, he walked, albeit with help, in front of a packed stadium, displaying not only his own determination to overcome his disability, but also his courage in revealing it so openly to the nation. Another FDR quote demonstrates the relentless positive outlook and commitment to moving forward that is so evident in that short film clip. Quote, We have always held to the hope, to the belief, the conviction that there is a better life, a better world, beyond the horizon. Bravery is more than the lack of fear. It's about being able to face uncomfortable situations and still persevere in pursuit of that better world. Courageous leaders like FDR invite conflict and challenge. He could have continued relying on his wheelchair and kept his physical struggles hidden from the public eye, but he chose instead to commit himself to the feat of walking again. Similarly, he thought big when attacking two of the worst crises in American history and the world, the Great Depression and World War II. He did not shy away from fights. He knew he faced the risk of failure and that there would be strong opposition. Those are the fights where true innovation is born. One should never fear failure, but rather embrace it as an opportunity to gain a new perspective and consider better techniques and alternative ways to success. Failure and opposition are signs that your ideas are new and radical, that you have the chance to truly shake things up. The New Deal was highly controversial, but FDR understood that in the face of such enormous challenges, a safe plan that garnered consensus would almost certainly fail. Think of your own life, business, or career, and how you have overcome obstacles. Where have you failed and in the process learned valuable lessons from your mistake? To help you visualize just how crucial these failures are to making progress, create what I call a failure resume. On the left side, list all of your setbacks and challenges and failures. On the right side of the piece of paper, what did you learn from each of them? Even if it was something as simple as learning to let go of unhelpful criticism, that's an important lesson worth remembering. Having all of your failures listed in front of you will make them less overwhelming. There's something about writing down the negatives that takes the bite out of them. And seeing all the valuable experiences you got out of those failures should remind you that you've constantly been moving forward, even if it hasn't always felt like it. FDR may never have made it to the end of the driveway, But compared to all the other challenges, physical and political, that he overcame, that small failure 
is barely a footnote in his biography. If you are courageous in your pursuit, your failures were similarly minor, however large they feel in the moment. FDR was a wise leader because he saw opportunities where others saw problems. Take a page out of his book and abandon the safe route. Failure is always a risk when you're attempting to create something that is more than mediocre or even just good. Cultures often reward mediocrity because it's an easy route to take. If you want your culture to stop being satisfied with the status quo, you'll need to tap into that bravery and continue on despite failures along the way, showing those around you what innovation truly looks like. If you are a supporter of the podcast, thank you. If you're interested in becoming a supporter, visit shop.philmckinney.com and make a contribution. For as little as a dollar a month, you can help cover the cost for the podcast. And as always, any profits from the contributions are donated to charity. If you enjoyed today's show, you can subscribe to the podcast on iTunes, YouTube, Spreaker, or wherever you find your favorite podcast. You can find all the links and resources for this episode, along with every other episode going back to 2005 at philmckinney.com. Just click on podcast. I would love to hear your feedback, such as your thoughts on the new format for the show, topics you would like covered, or any questions you might have. Ping me on Twitter at philmckinney, all one word, or you can find me over on LinkedIn and Facebook. You can find all the links where I hang out on social media at philmckinney.com. This podcast is a work of passion. It's my way to pay back the time and energy an early mentor invested in my career. His ask of me was to pay it forward. And my ask of you is to pay it forward by helping others know about the podcast, such as posting a comment on iTunes, sharing a show on Facebook, or simply sending an email to someone who you think might enjoy the content. As always, Thanks for listening.